So, Fede, um, looks like you're in Canada. Well, welcome. Welcome to the frozen wastes. Um, we talk about empathy, apathy, or whatever. Um, now, let's say that you walk out into the parking lot of your housing complex, and it's full of homeless people living in cardboard boxes. And I'm not talking about uh, a Miami-type hobo village or whatever you want to call these things. I'm talking about, say, a Brazilian favela or a busty of Calcutta or just some truly awful Asian slum, only we're in the northern Canadian climate <laughs> uh, with... Uh, low, low temperatures. Something I suppose that one would have found in Russia around about 1900. You ask the uh, question Tolstoy asked himself, what then must we do? Well, when you look at the scale of the problem of human suffering, uh, there's not a great deal that one individual can do, but we still have empathy, so we want to do something about it. Okay, now, you have to ask yourself, I think, and I think this is a legitimate question, why do you want to do anything about that? Why do you even tell yourself, or why do you even care? I think that that's a legitimate question. Why do you care? Well, there are several reasons why we care. There are several possible reasons. One is, we see the slum, or we see the homeless people out in the parking lot of our housing complex, and we say, you know, these people's lives could be an awful lot better if only minor efforts were made. <clears throat> um, and you imagine what their lives would be like if those efforts were made. Ah, we're pursuing something better. That's why I care, is because I just see a problem that can be solved and make the world a net better place. Or, I can look out and see all those homeless people living in the parking lot of my housing complex and say, what bastards we all are to allow this to happen in the midst of this enormous wealth. Can you imagine just what jerks we are? How awful we are? <laughs> um, so we just get all misanthropic and condemn the human race for being so awful. Um, in the first instance, I would say that your empathy ends up benefiting <laughs> the people who are in this miserable situation because it's an impetus to do something. In the second case, uh, nobody's likely to benefit because you turn into a despairing misanthrope and you don't do anything. You don't lift a finger to do anything. You just want to do as little as possible, as a matter of fact, to make sure that you can't be blamed for it because you see a problem that's somebody's fault as opposed to a problem that can be solved, or a problem that can at least be worked at. Um, that can give your life meaning. I can devote myself to helping the homeless. Plenty of people do this. I'm not saying that that's what you have to do, but what I'm saying is there are reasons why you look at the suffering in the world. When you look in the mirror, when you look at, uh, when you evaluate uh, everything that's going on in this world and you see um, or it, it makes you feel bad because of the suffering in the world, what do you do about that? And more importantly, why do you care? Do you care in a way that's going to benefit the person that you supposedly care about? Or, you, or do you care in a way that is likely to be the opposite of benefiting him? In other words, do you care um, for, or do you care in the interests of the, of the sufferer, or do you care in the interests of yourself? When you see the horrible things that go on in this world, do you want to fix them, 
Or do you want to just make sure that none of it's your fault? That's the problem with guilt. When you're obsessed with the idea of simply getting off the hook and putting other people on the hook, I might add, uh, for everything. It's not my fault. It's your fault. That's, you know, I'm not breeding. You're breeding. This is all you're doing. Your fault. It's not my fault. Okay. Uh, that still doesn't really help the person who is now living in a cardboard box in the parking lot of your house housing complex, does it? <laughs>